Welcome to our lecture on uh, uh, advanced power electronics and control. Today we are going to uh, actually uh, quite elaborated topic that is a left out portion of the isolated non isolated DC to DC converter and thereafter we will actually talk about the uh, uh, SMPS that is essentially an isolated DC to DC converter and for the high power application there will be a choppers. So, let us actually talk about a new uh, topology of the buck boost converter that is called the chook converter. Chook converter uh, essentially a buck boost converter, but there is one difference in it. The polarity of the output will be opposite to the polarity of the DC voltage supply. Otherwise, it is a versatile DC to DC converter, you can buck it, you can boost it. So, we have a uh, actually uh, two inductor here L1 and L2, one that is actually corresponds to the input side and constitute the boost part of the circuit and this part is actually constitute the buck part of the circuit, we have already discussed it. And so, and we have to choose uh, this value of the inductor in such a way and the switching frequency, so that this inductor current are in a continuous conduction mode. And C1 and C2 are chosen in such a way that capacitor voltage will have a negligible ripple. So, we can assume that Vc1 and Vc2 is almost constant and all the analysis is done in a steady state of the circuits and let us go for the analysis of the circuit. So, once it is on, so we have this characteristics. So, this switch is shorted, ultimately you will get this po polarity of this capacitor will get this polarity and ultimately you know uh, current I L 2 will try to flow through this uh, capacitor and we will have a opposite polarity here. And when switch is closed, then basically what happened this V C 1 will come as a part of the input circuits and ultimately the I L 2 will flow through this. So, ultimately I L 2 will be flowing through this and thus you will have a reverse polarity. So, this is the correct fixing of operation of the chook converter. Now, we can write the volt second balance that is actually V in actually D T plus V i n minus V c 1. 1 minus d into t where d is the duty cycle that is t on by t. Now, v in equal to 1 minus 1 uh, v in 1 minus d into v c 1 equal to 0 since. So, from there we can calculate the value of the v c 1, v c 1 will be actually v in 1 minus d that is the same expression what we will get in a boost topology. Now, again for the we apply the volt second balance for the second inductor that is output side that is L 2. So, V 0 plus C 1 into D T V 0 1 minus D into T 0. So, you can get and balance it. So, V 0 become minus D into V C 1 become minus D V i n 1 minus D. So, from this expressions we assume that this current L 2 is ne having a ne negligible ripple and so I L 2 plus I 0 should be equal to 0. From there we can write I L 2 equal to minus I 0 equal to V 0 by R that is the average current. So, D by 1 minus D V in by R. So, from the power balance if you uh, consider that all the devices are ideal, so there is no losses. So, you can write V 1 uh, V in into L 1 equal to V 0 into I 0 that should be equal to the V square by R. So, that will be given by D square by 1 minus D square V square by in. So, essentially you know V m square the input current become D square by 1 minus D square V in by R. So, this is the analysis of it. So, ultimately this is a duty cycle and 
we assume that this ripple current of this L1 is quite small, so it will be restricted by this this two zone, and you have it will come down like this when switch is off, and similarly, L2 have a this kind of pattern, and thus IC1 will have actually this kind of pattern of ramping. So similarly, what when it is be charging, so you'll find that it will decrease to a voltage of VC1 max and ultimately again it will actually ramp on and ultimately this value is IL mean. So, what you can see here, so this portion actually, so above this actually VC1, mean value of the VC1 is this one. So, inductor current is essentially will be actually storing the energy and this is the area where it will be dissipating the energy. So, and this is the voltage of V c 2 and this will have a ripple and you will get this kind of voltages. So, from this I L max is definitely is basically I N mean plus V L D I D T that can be replaced by actually this equation D V I N by L 1. So, I L peak to peak ripple will be actually this essentially it will be this term. So, if you add up and divide it by 2, so that become the average value of the inductor current. So, that value is basically 2 d square 1 minus d square v square by in if you actually divide it by 2, then this 2 will get cancelled. So, I L max essentially is that d by 1 minus d square plus R T by 2 L 1 into d into V n by R and I L 1 mean equal to d 1 minus d square minus R T by 2 L 1 V d in by R. So, we can write that actually similarly I L max equal to I L mean minus with by L 2 1 minus d into t. So, you can replace this equation by V in by since actually V 0 will have a negative sign of this V in. So, negative sign will be absorbed. So, V in by L 2 into d t. So, ripple in the secondary inductor will be basically or the second inductor will be L 2 max minus L 2 min that value will be V in d t by L 2. So, average value will be basically half of the load curve uh, uh, average value will be half of this value that is actually 2 I 2 equal to 2 D 1 minus D V in by R. So, I 2 max will be actually essentially this value and I T mean will be essentially this value. So, this will be the factor R T by 2 L 2 into this factor which is a common part of it. So, all this analysis has been done consider that low inductor ripple and the low capacitor ripple and it is in a continuous conduction mode. So, now we require to calculate the ripple voltage and these values has to be negligibly small. Okay. So, so that actually you can choose in such a way that value becomes small. Essentially, it has to be you know just take an example you know actually what should be the value of the ripple. So, it should be restricted around 10 percent of the average current. So, you know uh, V in will have some value let us say uh, 10 and T on can be you know actually 10 to the power uh, minus 4 and you know this value can be of, of any value. So, it can be of 10 to the power minus 3. So, the average is coming out to be actually little less. Okay. In that way actually you will have a quite low ripple current and generally ripple current has been restricted around 10 percent of this actually of the load current for the for this analysis and if it is furthermore then analysis will change. So, for calculating ripple voltage same way we can integrate over the V c 1 for the 
t on time of the duty cycle that is 1 by c 1 0 to t i c 1 d t. So, we, it will we know that actually the same if you reverse back to this actually this figure you can see that actually current which is actually flowing it is i c l 1 in case of this uh, switch off mode and i c l 2 in case of the switch on mode. So, we can integrate over it. So, this value will be essentially I L 2 into D T. So, from there we require to calculate the actually the ripple. So, D T by C 1 I L max plus I L mix plus this one. So, ultimately so this value will be given by. So, this is quite important because while you are designing you will be asked to design that the ripple current. So, ripple current should be 1 percent or 10 percent or 5 percent that will be prescribed by your actually requirement. So, ultimately you know uh, you have to choose this value. So, you because you know it is something in your hand. So, because you know that what should be the input supply. So, and duty ratio will be in a such that you know actually you will keep uh, your you will fix that L2 value in such a way within a range that you get desired ripple up to this and same way here. So, you require to have a desired ripple value may be 5 percent of V c 1. Uh, so, I 0 d t by c 1. So, from there actually you can restrict this value of the ripple. So, you can substitute in terms of actually if you do not want to keep the any term in terms of the I 0. I 0 may something actually depend on the load. So, you can change this value actually uh, V in by R. So, ultimately this equation becomes v, uh, d square V in d t R C 1 1 minus d square. So, this will be the amount of the ripple and so similarly uh, we can calculate the value of the second capacitor and similar way and we lead to this expression basically v in d t square 8 l c l 2 c 2. So, from there the second equations can be calculated. So, this is the all the analysis. So, after this analysis hope you can design a actually a bug boost converter that will be given for your design. So, this is your input voltage and this is your output voltage and we want uh, this much of ripple into the capacitor the two capacitor and inductor and please choose all those devices. So, this can be a assignment and you require to find it out and design a actually a chunk converter. Now, let us come to the little high power applications. So, generally this is a single switch and this works very well for below let us say uh, kilowatt level. So, when you require to run a DC motor and quite high rating then of course, thyristor is your only the choice or the GTO and you want a different kind of operations of your DC motor. Because still now in traction DC series motor still input into the applications and it has many utility and we do since it is still existing and still it is going away and still it has a life we do not want to phase it out. We rather retrofit a converter in front of it that is essentially the chopper and that will give you the more efficiency and the required performance. And for this reason we have a different kind of chopper. Chopper essentially are the essentially a, a DC to DC regulator it gives you the unregulated DC to the regulated DC. But one basic difference is that its switching frequency is quite low and its power rating is quite high. For this reason the chuck converter mostly uses switch as a MOSFET and here you will find and it is a unidirectional and you will find that actually uh, there is a different kind of mode of operation of the chopper. First kind of mode is class A chopper that is essentially a first quadrant chopper, first quadrant means actually it will be restricted 
in the IV characteristics in the first quadrant. So, it is only the positive operation it means that they will take voltage and current from the source and it, it will be sink. So, only motoring operation is possible mostly it is fitting to the DC motor. And if you want the second quadrant operations, so these are two kind of second quadrant operation is possible it is this or this. So, we will shall see that if you want that regenerative operation. So, we will have a uh, we will have a actually a second uh, second quadrant operation and there up uh, that is also basically uh, class B is also the one quad first quadrant operation, but you will have some entities of the regenerative breaking essentially it will operate in a fourth quadrant and thereafter you have a C chopper that will operate in both the two quadrant and then we will have the class D chopper it is also two quadrant, but it is basically it will change the directions and there is a class E chopper it will operate both the directions as well as the regenerative braking is possible. First A is a motoring, B is the regenerative if you combine A and B you get C you get actually motoring and the regenerative actually constitute into the same circuit. So, essentially this becomes the class C and if you incorporate basically the directional change the, so that you can go uh, forward direction the reverse direction then class T chopper is used and class T chopper with the regenerative will become class E. So, this is the actually the consideration. Now, this is the IV characteristics of this uh, the uh, chopper. So, you got a one thyristor mostly and it has to be commutated by the force commutation or you can use GTO. So, you have a gate pulses generally you have a this much of the gate pulse it is not followed, but if it is other kind of devices like IGBT or something because you know GTO require a little constant gate current to be maintained. So, that it is forward conduction mode required to be little lower. So, for this reason we have drawn this IG current if it is a thyristor it was enough to have once it is triggered. So, no more gate current is required. So, it can be GTO as well as a thyristor. So, and you have a actually a free wheeling diet to actually once it is off. So, current will circulate to it and mostly it will have RLE kind of load because it is a fitting and DC motor you have a resistance that is armature resistance or the you can model it the uh, mechanical part of the energy conversion as a resistance and thereafter you got an inductor because there is a huge series thereafter you got a back EMF that can be uh, modeled as a constant DC source. So, you got a and you assume that if current inductance is quite high and the, due to the heavy torque and current is continuous. So, you will have a actually current one it is switched on. So, it is actually current will rise like this once it is switch off. So, actually current will free wheel through the diode. So, current will drop and so on it will continue and output voltage since it is a continuous conduction mode. So, diode is conducting and we assume that drop across the diode is negligible. So, once it is on actually the whole voltage comes across the load and once it is off then voltage goes to the drop across the diode here will it is neglected. So, we will get a 0 voltage. Now, when chopper is on the supply voltage V s is connected to the load. So, you get V 0 equal to V s when chopper is off output voltage becomes 0 because of the free wheeling action. So, ultimately you can see that it is when all it is shorted since it is shorted. So, this output voltage become 0 and load current continues to flow in the same direction due to the inductive loading and through the free wheel diode. The average value of the output voltage and the current is always positive in class H upper and for this is it is called the first quadrant operation and it is called the step down chopper as power is always flow from source to load.
and this type of chopper is used to control the speed of the DC motor. Mostly DC series motor and this find its application in traction. Now this is a class B motor generally it is used for the please and let's see that actually this kind of thing is essentially are basically uh, if you consider this part of the circuit from this part of the circuit and just replace this thing a uh, switch and from here to here so it will see a boost topology. So this mode of operation is been done when you want actually battery to be discharged and fit the more voltage than the battery voltage or actually are in, in case of the regenerative braking of this DC motor. So, what happen when switch is on current will ramp on and ultimately uh, what happen when switch is off then high voltage will ac come across it. So, output voltage become V plus L D I D T equal to V 0 and that voltage will be higher than V and ultimately it will feed the source. So, for this reason it is called the regenerative mode of operations or since I 0 is in negative direction. So, this will be a second quadrant operation. So, we have a get triggering pulses. So, it was off once it is off actually you will have this actually current will grow through it thereafter actually once it will be actually flowing like this and output voltage actually when it is on essentially becomes 0 and once become off basically this voltage become V0 and this will fit the voltage. So, this is the pulses. So, this till that time voltage was 0, you have withdraw pulses, voltage become higher and you are feeding the source and ultimately this will be the chopper current I0 which has been shown here. At this point diode conducts and after that you know this current becomes 0 and actually the switch conducts. So, when chopper is on the E the back EMF of the motor most of the cases will drive the current through the L and R in opposite direction. So, it will feed the source during on period the chopper the inductor L stores the energy. So, output voltage V0 equal to 0. When chopper is off diode D conducts and the power of the energy stored in the inductor L s return to the supply. So, the output voltage V 0 equal to E plus L D I D T. The average output voltage is positive, but average output current in this case is negative and it is fed to the source. So, therefore, the class B chopper operates in second quadrant and this chopper's power uh, flow from the load to source. So, it is known as step up chopper and it is used for the regenerative braking of the DC motor. Now, class C chopper essentially it will combine if you see actually this if you see this part of the chopper this is a forward conduction mode for the class A chopper and this diode essentially makes it the CH1 if it is operated then generally D2 is operated. And if you want CH2 is operated then D1 is operated. So, CH1 D2 will have will make this chopper class A chopper and CH2 and D1 will make the chopper class B chopper and if you combine whole thing that becomes class C chopper that will operate in this quadrant. So, you have a gate pulses for chopper 1 
if you on the chop of one then voltage can the current will flow through it and till this time actually this is on so ch 1 will be on and actually it will get the normal load current then automatically the free wheel action will start ultimately you will find that uh, uh, this diode d2 is conducting similarly thereafter ch2 will be on and it will have a forward motoring mode with this system then so let us see how does it operate class c chopper can be used for the step up and the step down class c chopper is a combination of class a and the class b chopper first quadrant operation of ch1 and d uh, on is on or d2 conducts and for the second quadrant ch2 on or d1 conducts when ch1 is on load current is positive and on time interval or the on time interval of the output voltage v is a power flow from load to source when ch1 is turned off the energy stored into the inductor l forces current to flow through the diode d2 so the output voltage becomes zero when current continues to flow in the positive direction when ch2 is triggered the voltage e forces current to flow in opposite direction through l and ch2 therefore the voltage should be equal to zero so when ch2 is turned off the energy stored into the inductor drives the current through the d and supply so the voltage becomes v the input current becomes negative and power flow from load to source therefore in this type of chopper the average output voltage is always positive but average output current can be positive or negative so that is the thing so it can be both the polarity so current is bidirectional therefore it operates both in first and second quadrant and ch2 and ch1 and ch2 should not be turned on simultaneously generally it is been used as a compli uh, actually complementary logic so when ch1 is on ch2 has to be off and vice versa and it will lead to the short circuit of the supply and we have to ensure that actually proper time gap is given between the turn on and turn on of this devices for this is an actually diode comes into the pictures once h1 is on there will be a delay then says to can be on and in between diode will flow class c chopper is a combination of the class a and the class b chopper and it can be used for dc motor speed control for motoring mode for armature voltage control and the regenerative of the dc motor when you, you want that actually the source required to be charged from this actually the dc motor so but there is a issue involved most of this actually you have studied that if it is a uh, power flow is unidirectional so while using this mode uh, this mode we require to be little cautious this short switch have a capability to absorb power most of the cases you know actually we generate this voltage by rectification by the diode which rectifier and thus it is unidirectional current can flow to the ac side to the dc side unless you use a full control converter or the active rectifier so power is not possible to actually feed it back to the source so then what will happen if there is a capacitor this voltage will swell up so this is one of the issues 
while actually operating in the regenerative braking if it is run through the grid mode. So, for this reason we may add a braking resistor here if you want actually the protection of this circuit. Now, come to the class D chopper. Class D chopper is essentially you know what does it do? It can actually change the directions of the uh, motor. So, it is reverse rotating po is possible and so it has a forward motoring mode and the reverse motoring mode. So, this is IG1 if it is thyristors it will be it will require a very small amount of current, but you require to add a commutation circuit for it. So, either of it. So, it will continue to conduct like that and in this mode we say that it is a forward motoring mode. So, thyristor TH uh, CH1 and the CH2 will conduct and ultimately current will be rising in this direction as shown here. And then what happen when it is this thyristor is off then diode will come into the picture of the conduction. So, diode D1 D2 will conduct here and you will get a negative voltage. Since you are getting a negative voltage while conduction of D1 D2 for this reason it will operate first and fourth quadrant. Please remember that class C operate in this quadrant and it is a combination of the motoring forward motoring and the regeneration and it is the forward motoring and the reverse motoring. So, you will get this kind of voltages and ultimately as you see that you can make the directions of the E negative. It means that the direction of the if, if you can make negative it means that you can lead the motor to rotate in the reverse direction. So, it is also a two quadrant operation both CH1 and CH2 are on at a time and output voltage becomes big and the current will flow through the load. Please note that here the average output voltage is positive. You can actually change it like this then output average out, assuming that current is a continuous conduction mode average output voltage can be made negative and thus you are applying a negative voltage and it will be actually operating gradually in the negative direction. When CH1 and the CH2 are the turn off the load current as actually is assumed to be continuous and so that it is actually has a high torque to deliver and continues to flow in the same direction through diode D1, D2 due to the inductive load and this output voltage become minus V. The average load voltage is positive if chopper is on is more than the time of T off and vice versa. So, if it is T on is more than T off then it is a forward motoring mode, if it is T off is more than T on it is a reverse motoring mode and therefore, load current flows always in a positive direction, but the voltage changes positive and the load voltage changes to the positive and the negative voltage polarity. This type of chopper operates in first and the fourth quadrant that is actually for the motoring purpose we say that forward motoring and the reverse motoring mode. So, another thing is that class E chopper there is a combination of all forward motoring uh, regenerative uh, braking, forward regenerative braking, reverse motoring and the reverse regenerative braking. We shall continue to our discussions with the class C chopper in our next class. Thank you for your attention.